Welcome to the Fantasy Football Hub YouTube channel. Today, I'm joined by FPL expert FPL Salah to preview the upcoming game week, game week 11. First of all, my friend, as always, we're going to have a quick look back at your game week 10 team. You hit the wildcard button and you got a yeah. green arrow. So, so that is something. How was game week 10? Are you happy with your wildcard after just one week? Um, I guess, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I was... Yeah, I mean, I'd say I was I was happy with the process. I was happy with my team. It was just a bit annoying that the, the like the kind of fifty fifty calls, like you know, I got you know, I was considering Matoma, Bowen, and Diaby, and Diaby was the one that hauled. And you know, other my other players didn't really do much. Gabriel was benched, which was quite annoying. And Arsenal got yeah. the clean sheet. Um, so I did get a green arrow. I got six, 69 points, which isn't too bad. But I really need to you know really kind of push on now in the next few weeks. I'm ranked at one point five well 1.6 million now um so i do really need to kind of push on a little a little green so you can't really yeah you know, it can't be too disappointed i guess with the green I, I know when i played my wild card i got a red arrow and then the, the next two weeks were, were where you get the gains just off the bat do you think you've made any any mistakes with your wild card i mean palmer and matoma were the two positions that you were talking about in last week's video mm -hmm. that were that were close of course bone and diaby did better this week but i mean who knows that is very swingy apart from that any glaring errors no, I don't think I made any errors. I was um, I was happy with the Palmer pick. Uh, I think he was very unfortunate not to get any attacking returns yeah. against Brentford, especially that first half. I mean, he was like running things. You should have got had maybe two assists. Should have had a penalty as well, I think, Chelsea. Um, so unlucky there. Um, and Matoma, Diaby and Bowen was just like one of those, you know, whoever I was going to pick, just the, the one I didn't pick was going was, was gonna to score. That's <laughs> what happened, but... It was 50-50 calls, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, and I'm happy with like you know Brighton's fixtures coming up. So yeah, let's judge it. Let's judge it in the next four or five weeks. Indeed, indeed. So let's have a look at the team for for game week eleven. Mm -hmm. Um, now I, I don't know. Has defence become an issue out of nowhere? Really, just just immediately, or do you think it looks fine? Just looking at the predicted points here, mm -hmm. it's interesting that that Taylor is actually the one that is being suggested to play here. I don't think you are going to do this. I presume that you you'll play Gay. But Burnley yeah. away, the Burnley do score quite a few goals at home. How are you feeling about your defence in general then? Uh, I'm fine. I mean, the, the plan was to either to, to play Gehi this week, um, you know, with, with Cash and Simicast. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. It's quite okay. interesting that the um, the tools seem to, to start Charlie Taylor, um, probably because it's a home fixture, but I'm happy with Gehi there. I think, you know, Palace's defence is actually pretty good. Uh, you know, they're, like, they're pretty much like a mid-team like a mid-table defence. Um, so I'm happy with that. Obviously, Gabriel, I think, is going to be benched this week. You know, Newcastle away is one of their toughest fixtures of the season for Arsenal. You know, Newcastle away, you know, they're, I think they've scored the most goals with the most XG in the league so far. Um, so, so yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, Jack, I'll very likely be saving the transfer, I think, um, yeah. unless something crops up. Um, I've got one million in the bank. So I've had one million in the bank. I didn't really know what to do with it because... You know, that Palmer spot could have became like you know, Anthony Gordon, but I didn't think there was that much of an upgrade from, you know, Palmer to Gordon, especially when you take the price in consideration. So I had one million in the bank. I did kind of consider, you know, just taking a, a little kind of punt on um, an archer to to uh, Edward. Because, you know, if you look at um, Crystal Palace's next three games, you've got Burnley, Everton and Luton. But uh, if you, uh, I, just, I, don't, I don't think that's kind of worth it in, in terms of, you know, upside, I think, great fixtures, but his stats aren't, his, his kind of underlying numbers aren't really great. Um, he will be on penalties, though, with no easy, so it's kind of tempting, but if I do that move, I will have to bench Palmer, uh, you know, away to Spurs. So, I don't know, I'm feeling good about Palmer. I think, you know, he's uh, he was the one pick that I kind of, you know, when I was watching the games, he was one pick. I was, I was really happy that I went with. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I know. For me personally, I, my decision was Palmer or not Palmer. I mean, Palmer was one half, and I decided not to go for him. But watching that game, especially as a Chelsea fan, yeah, I, I mean, he clearly was the best player. But the rest of the team, the rest of the attack, yeah, I don't know. Like this is the thing we talk about numbers and underlying numbers a lot. When Palmer is supplying big chances for the likes of Kukurea and others in the team who who aren't that prolific at the moment. Mm -hmm. it, who, who, you could argue that perhaps it doesn't matter as much although I would say that he, he did play very very well it's got to be a little bit tempting though those next three Tottenham away Man City at home Newcastle away if you could bench him in those three for, for Ed Wild is that tempting you a little bit I mean I, I, first of all I can't, I'll, I'll start with Gabriel you, you, you said that he's benched for you do you think he'll be benched for, for Arsenal coming up? Oh uh, no I don't think so because um, 
Like I think when uh, Arteta was asked after the match about you know Odegaard's benching, he said that he was Odegaard was carrying a little injury, and that they'd you know checked up you know with the kind of medical team you know the minutes that some players had played, and there's uh, there was he said that there were certain players who'd played a lot of minutes uh, who needed a rest, and Gabriel has played and started you know the last fourteen games for club and country, so I think. From that, I think it was probably a little rest that he was needing. I think Odegaard and and Gabriel just like one of those where they play a lot of minutes. Uh, it was an easy fixture, you know. Not, it's not going to get much more, you know, uh, like you know, kind of easier than than Sheffield United at home. So it, it did make sense if you are going to rest those players in a fixture. It made sense that Sheffield United at home. So I do think from next game week they're going to be back in the team. Um, he won't be back in my team, obviously. Uh, he'll be benched, but then going forward. Amazing fixtures, and um, I'm fairly happy with them at 4.7 million. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I, I've seen some people saying that because there is, that, there's of course, cover there, and you could argue better defenders on the ball in someone like a Kivio who, who took his place this week, that, that Gabriel could be benched for the, the fixtures that we want him in, the easier fixtures when they are going to dominate yeah. the ball and, and have less you know, defensive duress. I'm not sure about that. As you said, he has played 14 games in a row for club and country. Yeah. I think that's. That's very important. Yeah. It's just it's just the start of the season, really, which has given us some doubts, isn't it? Yeah. Really, I think for, from what we've seen, from what Arteta said after the press conference, I think for me, I've got to assume that you know he is the first choice player. Yeah, I think if you know that it, it does come to the point where he's benched for like Burnley at home, mm. uh, which is game week twelve, then we've got to start worrying. But I think for now, I, I'm I'm pretty calm about it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about goalkeepers now, um, because according to Fantasy Football Hub's predicted points. Turner is predicted to score more points than Ariola. It is very close, as you can see on screen, just just 0.5 points in it. Yeah. But Turner with the with the home fixture against the Villa side, who although they are phenomenal and very prolific at home, are not away. Mm. Versus Ariola, yes, it's 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 an away fixture, and it's against a, a Brentford team that, that that you know just did very well against Chelsea. Yeah. Seems to be scoring a lot of goals despite the fact that. Or consistently scoring goals despite the fact that they, they obviously don't have Tony. What do you think there? Would you would you start Turner? I'm not sure about that yet. I'm I'm still I think that's gonna be one of those I'll need to like kind of look at the numbers. I, I do know that West Ham's defence has been poor, like you know, they've been in the bottom five for yeah. XGC. Um, you know, bottom three actually. Ariola's actually, you know, the one that's been kind of keeping them in, in games in a in a lot of games. He's been making a lot of saves. Turner, I think, you know. He has the home fixture, but right now I've got Ariola on goal. I just think both. I think both of them are going to concede, but I think yeah. with Ariola, he's got that you know that chance of making a lot of saves and possibly you know getting bonus points as well. You know, if he has a really really good game, he you know end up making five six saves or something like that. But yeah, or maybe saving an Mbemo penalty, which would absolutely be beautiful. Whoa. But <laughs> wow. but yeah, so I've got Ariola in there at the moment, but. Um, and I think he probably will end up staying, but it's if I'm not, it's not like a hundred percent decision yet. Sure thing, yeah. And and to be fair, it does look like a, a general role across your team. I want to ask you a little bit about about plans for for future game weeks. I'm just going to go on to game week twelve. So say you do roll this week, just initial thoughts because it's good to you know roll and, and not have too much money. Be open to 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 you know differences in in form, injuries, whatever. Do you have a general idea of where you're maybe looking to to use a transfer in game week twelve or maybe two? I, I don't actually, because look, if you, if you look at game week, I think I'm going to save this week. And game week twelve looks absolutely amazing. Like you know, there's literally no transfers to make. That's that's obviously if I've got no problems. We do two weeks. You know, by that time, Gabriel could be a problem. You know, yeah. potentially, um, I could have you know injuries. I could have you know a lot of things could happen in two weeks, as you know, Jack. Um, yeah. at the moment, it does look like. Um, you know, that is a good week to save a transfer, uh, which is why I was quite so, you know, thinking about that Edward move, because I think, you know, I can I can make that move, uh, you know, the one free transfer. And with game week 12, I'm not really going to... Roll anyway. I'm yeah. going to roll anyway. But then, you know, obviously the flip side to that is I could get injuries, I could get two injuries, yeah. you know, something could happen. So that is obviously on the premise that, you know, everything goes smoothly and nothing, none of my other players get injured. Um, but yeah, at the moment, um, I'm just gonna kind of take it a game cut, one game cut at a time, um, and and see what happens. Because obviously, when you play a wild card, you've you've planned it for the next few weeks, and you know I, I don't see me making many transfers unless obviously my players get injured or get dropped, etc. So let's see. Yeah, I completely agree with that with that logic. I think I've said it on multiple videos across this season. Now, I don't like the whole 
oh, I don't know what I'm going to spend my transfer on in two, three, four weeks because there will always be something. You may not see yeah, it now, but I mean, always is. you know, there are 20 games to be played. Oh, well, there are 10 games to be played before you're rolling and then and then potentially thinking of other transfers. So there'll always be something 100%, even if it's not an injury, you know. There'll be, there'll be a difference in form or something. Let's talk about captaincy. Harlan, the clear favourite here on predicted points. Anything to suggest that you would go with Salah? Yeah, I, I seen that earlier, actually, because I was I was checking the captaincy and I saw Salah was like, my, uh, sorry, Harlan was like miles ahead. Um, I don't know. I think it's a lot closer than it, than the the the, the eye tool kind of suggests because okay. obviously, like, you know, Bournemouth at home is, is great, but then Luton's an amazing fixture. Salah's a midfielder. He gets one more point for a goal. Uh, and he's he gets obviously you know the clean sheet point and his assist threat is much higher as well. So, so yeah, I mean my my armband is currently on Haaland, um, but again, it's not actually set in stone. Um, I'm you know I could possibly go Salah this week. Uh, I I think it's a lot closer than than a lot of the models are suggesting. Uh, just looking at the, I think it was actually I think you might have tweeted it earlier actually. Um, Abdul's Twitter is on screen by the way. If you want to go and, go and follow him for all the good information that, that you provide and opinion of course one thing that I, i've said before that i really like that you do is is you you show the the stats based on all the, all the percentages based on the betting odds of who is most likely to yeah. to score harlan's way ahead isn't he he's on yes. something like 60 what is it 68 69 yeah. it's, it's incredible right yeah it's, he's, he's he's about 68 percent this week wow is about you know 50 53 but then, uh, look, that, that scoring odds, then when you, it's, it's good to take that in consideration. But good then point. when you're playing FPL, we've got to think, look, there's there's assist there's assist odds there as well. Chance of assist. There's also, you know, uh, obviously the fact that I just mentioned earlier that he's a midfielder and he gets an extra point for a goal. So it's something, it's, it's good, it's, it's a good, th- like something to think about. And it's something to take into consideration uh, this week. And, and I'm glad we've got a, a bit of a decision this week for captaincy. Because I, although I do think Haaland will be the most captained, I don't think he'll be miles ahead of Salah, mm, which is good because we don't want yeah. we don't want a crazy you know two hundred percent EO sort yeah, of I know. dead spot. We want to at least gain from our captain. Completely agree. Right then, let's let's end things off with looking at your AI transfers, my friend. Um, you can probably imagine that the the recommended option is to roll. I don't think that's that much of a surprise. The alternative option is interesting because it's saying that you could sell Gabrielle. Mm. for for Pedro Porro. We've already spoken about Gabriel. I think, you know, now that we have seen that he can be rested or, or yeah. dropped, we're not entirely sure yet which which it is for sure. Yeah. That has brought his predictive points down a bit. I don't yeah. personally like the fact that it's recommending Pedro Porro in his place. I think that if there was a, a clear viable alternative at that kind of four, five to, to five million slot that you could sell Gabriel for. I mean, for example, you have Simicast already. I think yeah. he'd be a, a good option in that. That yeah. could be more of a, a transfer you, that you look to make, but I can't see you doing Gabriel to, to Pedro Porro, right? Oh no, definitely not. I mean, I just got into Porro last week on, on yeah. the wild card, so exactly. Yeah, I, I think Chelsea's fixtures are decent for attack, and that's why I've still got some there, but not not for defense. I think that the the the, the, the I two might be looking at his attacking threat because Porro has got immense attacking threat. Um, but yeah, maybe one for later on in the season when the fixtures pick up. Exactly. I mean, the fixtures turn, don't they? Well, they have turned, really, and I guess that's why you've yeah. you've gotten rid of a, of a lot of Tottenham players. Just a word on, on Tottenham, Tottenham midfield, then. Um, for those of us that still have Madison and Son, is that is that too much, do you think, now? Or, that you know, they're still accruing points. Is it just better to perhaps hold them? People are looking at, at Saka for 12, for example. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with, with Son, I think he is a keep, right, for me. I think he's, for me... That's why I kept him on, on my on my wild card. I think he's pretty much non-negotiable for me. You know, he's playing as a number nine, classified as a midfielder, amazing finisher, great player, right? And obviously played played ninety minutes as well. Uh, finally, uh, last game week, mm. also. So his minutes are looking good now. But Madison, he, he's an easy, he, he's a keep. He's a great player. But at the same time, like as you just mentioned, like you know, game week twelve and Saka. Um, uh, when Arsenal's fixtures pick up again, I think Saka has got Newcastle this week, obviously, but then they've got Burnley in game week 12 and then their fixtures pick up massively. So Madison yeah. to Saka is a good move in game week 12, but at the same time, it's not like a no-brainer. Like, you know, you can't, you can't still keep Madison. Um, you know, as I said, I think he's going to, even though all those tough fixtures, he's going to like, you know, just, he's one of those kind of glue picks. He just, he's going to keep on picking up returns. But then I think with Saka, with those fixtures, probably got the higher upside. So it really depends on your team. It's team dependent. 
Um, I think you know definitely you can you can keep Madison or you can sell him, uh, you know, for Osaka or even possibly one of like Diaby or Matoma. But you know, depending on what you're going to do with that extra money, where's that extra money going? That's what it all kind of matters about that as well. So it really depends. I, I do think um, you know Son for me is like a I, I wouldn't say like a season keeper, but you know, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Long term, uh, but sure. Madison is a bit more disposable. Yeah, it's it's just hard. Like again, like, I know we've said it a lot, but there's so many good options in 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 fantasy. That's it. I mean, I for personally, I didn't, I couldn't find a way to get Watkins. It's obviously terrifying seeing his numbers. Got very lucky there to <laughs> to did. get away with that. You, I mean, you, oh, he got he got like a zero point seven nine xg right against um Luton, and it was like zero point six one xa. That like, is like. 1.4 XGI. Wow, like non-owners were extremely lucky. All I will say is that 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 0.79 XG, the majority of it came in one, in one uh in one motion because he had a shot that was saved, then he had another shot that was saved. Yeah, the, the cash, the cash when he cash crossed it in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that could only have resulted in one goal. However, I so, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I wasn't when I wasn't watching, I was just looking on on Sofa Score, looking at the live XG. I was like, oh my goodness me, they've they've got over <laughs> one XG in 15 minutes. This is going to be an yeah. absolute bloodbath. Thankfully for me, it didn't, it, it didn't end up like that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of those, you know, there are always other yeah. good options. We're seeing non Haaland teams kind of dip back a bit this week, but yeah. they did well the previous couple of weeks. Yeah, you, you didn't well with the Watkins because that was the one fixture that, like, you know, was the big one, the looting at home. And I think if you survived that, then you can possibly survive the next two, depending on that. But I still think he's a good transfer in because he's got... Forest, Fulham, Spurs, and Bournemouth. I think all those fixtures are actually good for. That's the thing, attack. yeah. Which, that's, that's why I was close to going with him because I was I was thinking if I can survive Luton, it's okay. Because I was looking at the next three and I was like, I don't mind Forest away. I don't mm. mind that. I think that's an okay. I don't think I don't see him going crazy in that game. Yeah, same. Fulham at home, I I think they they look good against Brighton, so I'm I'm slightly more confident in that. But I mean, that's a good home fixture. And then yeah, even even Bournemouth and Spurs away, are pretty good fixtures really. But yeah, I, I, I think... kind of made my bed now. So yeah. Yeah, no, I think. I did you get Saka in then? Yeah, I went for Saka. Yeah. Um, slightly disappointed, but I think you know, to ta- I was pretty much weighing up just Saka. Well, I-, I felt like I had to get Saka in. Um, yeah. at-, at some point, it was either going to be uh in game week ten or game week twelve. Whereas I thought maybe I can swerve Watkins and then just save a couple of transfers there to use on the rest of my team. Otherwise, it was pretty much a two v four transfer set of moves, and I thought I'd I'd just be better off saving those extra two and and. You know, testing my luck really without without going for Watkins you worked out Darwin. this week, but you could get Darwin we'll instead now. That's the thing. That's the thing. Little word on him. Is yeah, great, great, great pick. I mean, like, I think with with Darwin, he's he's he's. I think he's first choice. I think you know, um, Salah, Diaz, and Darwin, first choice front three. Um, he's going to start the majority of the games. I think obviously, you know, I think if you look at Liverpool's next, um, just say the next four. I think he'll start looking. I think he'll start against Brentford. City might be one of those games where I think he, you know, might get a bit rotated. You, you know, Klopp might want to kind of change up a bit there. Um, and then I think he probably start, probably start f- Fulham. Oh well, yeah, yeah, the Fulham game is is a wee bit risky, I think, because that's after the international break, isn't it? I think no, it's is not, it, isn't. I think no, the no, City. Sorry. This is what's good about his fixture. Yeah, which is so like, he might miss the City game, game, which is okay. I think he might miss the City game because yeah. he's late. I want to change up and then I think from there on in I think he's he's first choice so yeah. the City game you wouldn't mind him missing as well so exactly I think he's a, he's a great pick but um, there is always that chance there though because Jota's there you know mm-hmm. Gatko's there um, that you know there's always a chance of an early sub but you know you saw against um, you know last game week um, you know that Sometimes you know he stays on for the full for the, for the full duration. Okay then, mate. Yeah, Darwin definitely definitely a man that I'm interested in. I mean, we know his his underlying numbers are so good, and he just looks he's just so like impressive when when he's on the pitch. Definitely a, a Watkins alternative down the line. But for yeah. now, that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you would like to to have a look at anything that I've shown in this on screen, all the predicted points, all the data, all the numbers. It's all there. And also just that's the beauty of, of being able to use that tool and, and skip through game weeks and see how a team's shaping up as we did looking at game week 12 where, where Abdul may well have a couple of transfers in hand. Link to do so is down below. Go and check out the website. Still a seven day free trial. Take advantage of that. Abdul, mate, thank you very much as always. Uh, probably going to be a roll, but you know, there are midweek games to come. So, so you never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, roll for now, but never know. Indeed. All right, mate.
Thank you very much as always. And guys, we will yeah. see you on the next one. Good luck this game week.